Welcome back to Insert Art. I'm Morgan. I'm Ariel. What do we call that? Mariel? Oh, that's or terrible. Egan? I hate Better that. than Mariel. Today we are generating D&D characters. Funny because Morgan doesn't actually play D&D. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and I only play a modified version, like with my own world and characters and stuff. But I think a lot of the principles of character design and stuff will still apply. We kindly, politely asked Mighty ChatGPT to produce a list of characteristics. We've got five different characters. Categories. We've got race and class, appearance and physical traits, backstory and motivation, then there's personality and alignment, lastly gear, armor, weapons and equipment. So there's five lists from 1 to 20, they're all random combinations of those characteristics and we're gonna use our... Uh, D20s, they're huge, they're like gobstoppers. This one matches my... Uh, Eye color? Yeah. The purple also matches my eye color. <laughs> I, I see that. All right, D20, Morgan, go. <sighs> what do you got? I got... Nine. Nine. So you have an elf wizard. Hell yeah, elf right. wizard. Let me, let me just write down. Can elves be wizards? You can be anything you want to be in D&D. That's the point. Oh my god. I've got 12. 12 is a half elf fighter. So we're elvish today? Second roll for physical traits. Morgan? Let's... Go! 13. You That's... have claws. Your claws. character may have sharp claws on their hands or feet, providing a natural weapon or means of climbing. Hectic. <laughs> Appearance. I have a prehensile tail. Backstory and motivation. 12. Your character is seeking to restore balance Ooh, to the like... natural world, fighting against those who would destroy it for their own gain. With my claws. With your claws. Yes. That's uh, a 6. The character is seeking a lost artifact or treasure that they believe will grant them great power or wealth. Fourth category is alignment and yeah. personality. Three. Three. You are neutral evil, primarily motivated by their own self-interest and mm. is willing to harm others to achieve their goals. With my claws. But you're neutral evil trying to restore balance to the world. Yeah, what? You're so, like Thanos. <laughs> cool. With claws. He, then he can't snap. His claws are too long. Can he you still snap. He'll be like... Oh Come on! <laughs> I'm number two. I am lawful neutral. The character values order and tradition above all else, but is not necessarily interested in morality. Last category is costume, weapons, and equipment. All cool, in cool, one. Cool, 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 cool. 20. Twenty. All right, costume. Gunslinger's duster. What? What's a duster? I don't know what a duster is. Google like a big it. trench coat. Like <laughs> you know the cowboys. Oh yeah, the yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. nice. Weapon, revolver. What? Makes sense, you're, you're a gunslinger. You, you have a bandolier of bullets, smoke bombs, and a grappling hook. Why do you need a grappling hook? You have claws. You're this guy's nuts. He's like a cowboy wizard beast man. <laughs> cool. You rolled a 20. Do you know what that means yeah. in D&D? That's like your killer master move, you know. One, a natural one, is naturally the opposite. So that's actually like mm. a failure. So on this last roll, you've got a 20, I've got a one. Costume is elven ranger garb. <laughs> Weapon is longbow. Oh, and equipment cool. is quiver of arrows, short sword, and a backpack. Legolas. So that's our character cool. generation. We're going to get to it. And we'll see you in the voiceover. My character, the race was an elf wizard, which I thought was very cool. Uh, they're seeking to restore balance to the natural world, fighting against those who would harm it. So I thought like eco warrior immediately and sort of ran with that. The uh, personality alignment was neutral evil. And How did you balance um, having like a evil with trying to restore balance to the natural world? I sort of immediately <laughs> thought of Poison Ivy from Batman. Mm. Good intentions, but violent means. I am nature's arm. Her spirit! The gunslinger's duster, the revolver, the bandolier, smoke bombs, and a grappling hook. That, that's a lot. So you had poison ivy going gunslinger. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's a pretty cool premise. I pretty much had a really strong idea of the character already, and I just wanted to experiment with some silhouettes and see what to do with the duster. It could be like really exciting with like a silhouette or it can be really limiting. I needed the character to move because if the duster was just hanging, it was <laughs> not gonna work for <laughs> me. Silhouette's yeah, funny. it's no good. I very quickly just started mm. putting some lines down and finding like her like physique. I wanted to have that like elven, like sleek, slender yeah. sort of body. It's like, so good how you actually got the duster out of the way and you can actually read yeah. all the limbs so clearly. I tried to do like a 10 gallon hat crossed with a uh, <laughs> like a, a witchy wizard hat and I don't know if that works but... I love that actually. Thank you. I had this funny idea with uh, what to do with the claws and I decided she sort of has the ability to control plants mm -hmm. like 
poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> That's her like claws mm -hmm. like manifesting in that way. I, once I got the line work sort of roughed out, I just popped in all this sort of like trapped light and ambient occluded light, just sort of to get all the shapes working mm. and looking, you know, three dimensional. Um, oh, look at yeah. that form suddenly starts to pop. Oh, thanks. And then, yeah, I started laying color in. I sort of went with like earthy, like greens, and then I wanted to complement that with some reds and like oh, some... Are those bullets on her hat? Yeah, so the, bandol <laughs> the bandolier, I was like, usually that's worn like around the body, but I was yeah. like, what if it was wrapped around it? Yes, hat? fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, no, I thought that was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, so once I got those colors working, it's got a, like a yucky, like um, mm. green, like it's earthy, but it's Vomit also green. like sort of acidy, harsh tones. Evil neutral, like grossness. I wanted that to sort of like convey her like alignment, like through color. Now it's just a matter of overpainting and like fixing all my mess, pretty much, and just getting everything to look a bit more finished. I don't see it as mess. Like to me, mm. that's just dynamism. You know? mm. uh, let's, yeah, done it. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> totally deliberate. Totally planned. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can, can you talk to me a bit about her, uh, like the duster, the cape? Because that, that's so yeah. much fabric there. Mm. I personally struggle whenever there's more than like skin tight fabric. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. So, how have you chosen to, to draw the mass of fabric? Mm. How do you choose the shapes to highlight or to downplay? And how do you just like make it work with the whole composition when there's like, there's as much fabric as there is her? If you're doing something like a cape or a duster, it's good to think about it in like a liquid. Like it has a flow and it has like points of tension that you need to be aware of. Mm. Cause it's like flying in the air. Like it yep. is essentially flying within like a stream of liquid, like yep. air is basically like a liquid. Right. You do sort of need to like consider the way fabric behaves, but that's sort of like a whole... Is that something you've intentionally thing. like studied before? Because I'm just yes. looking at the way you highlight stuff. Like I would mm. be completely lost if you gave me those shapes to work with. It comes with a lot of practice, but there are people like Todd McFarlane, who is mm -hmm. the creator of Spawn and he does a lot oh, of like... Yeah. Oh, Spawn's cake yeah, is Batman amazing. And, and, yeah, other comic books, mm. um, but he doesn't extremely well and I'm like very heavily like influenced by his work. Yeah, I should go back and look yeah. at Spawn. I should I, study their cape. It's completely unrealistic but it looks fantastic. I love it, yeah. It's, it's yeah. just a matter of like whether or not you want to convey like super realistic like fabric right. physics or if you want to like convey like movement and like this True. dynamic situation. The weird tree claw like popping out of the ground like mm -hmm. sort of reads pretty well. Added in like some magic and like a blur effect bursting out of the ground and it's mimicking like her hand movement. I actually really like her huge high collar, the way it goes <laughs> yeah. so high, it goes like past her hat. Yeah. It goes all the way up past her eyes. And that's mm. something I wouldn't have thought to do. You know, when mm. you are that mysterious character, everyone thinks of a hood. Yeah. So you've got that hat coming low over the eyes, which is sort of more classic. But then the way her collar just mm. like frames her face in, that is such a strong shape and I, I oh, love thanks. it. Yeah, that's great. Looking at it, it reminds me of, uh, do you know what Carmen San Diego is? Yes! yes! <laughs> oh. I didn't even think about that. I was so fixated on Poison Ivy, but, <laughs> but yeah, maybe Carmen San Diego meets Poison Ivy meets McCree. I have no idea how this works or fits into Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah, maybe... This would totally be a playable maybe, character. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, awesome. 100%, 100%. I love that. Yeah. So my half-elf fighter, my first question was, what is his other half? So looking at physical traits with his prehensile tail, I was like, well, he's half-elf and half something with prehensile tail. So I actually Googled, like, besides monkeys, what are animals that have this kind of tail that can grab things? I ended up going with a pangolin. It's like an anteater, but with, like, super armor. <laughs> I love them. I, my first thought was, that's not real. They're real and they're... Freaking adorable. They look like um, and terrifying. Like, like dragon ant eaters, but they're actually yeah. really gentle creatures. Uh -huh. They have such a thick, chunky, dragon-like tail. Mm. You wouldn't think that it would be prehensile, but apparently it is. So I learned that today. 
A lot of the other descriptors kind of pointed towards Legolas. So it's kind of a pangolin mm. Legolas, or as we've come to call it now, Pangolas, which is a terrible name. Is, but it, <laughs> is it terrible or is it, it the best name? I decided to take a little bit of liberty with the backstory and motivation. So he's seeking this artifact, not necessarily because it grants him power or wealth, but because he actually has lost his right arm which will come up um, as a design feature. But he's looking for this thing because he believes that the artifact has restorative powers and he wants his right arm back. So this guy, well, first of all, don't think too much about how he ended up as a half pangolin, half elf. Mm. But beyond that... Well, now I am. <laughs> now, why have you I'm done sorry. this to me? I'm sorry. I imagine like a lot of half breeds, he's kind of an outcast. He probably yeah. lives with more of like the pangolin because the elves obviously reject this half half creature. Mm. Pangolins are often hunted for their scales because of his weird pangolin genes and scales and stuff. Mm. He was hunted at one point yeah. and that's how he lost his arm. Lawful neutral, um, that's easy to do with elves. Uh, not interested in morality, just wants to kind of preserve the status quo in his family and his clan. All right, so my design process is quite different. I just started by chucking down um, heads, because heads and portraits are my comfort zone, and that's just an easy launching point for me. Then I started looking at reference. I knew that as an elf, I wanted him to still have that slender, mostly humanoid figure, which was interesting trying to combine that with the roly-poly hunched over pangolin silhouette. Uh, initially, I thought that, okay, so um, under his gear, he's meant to have backpack, and I thought, well, what if he had a backpack that looks like a pangolin body, you know, it's just made of scales, the scales lift up and that's how he puts stuff in the backpack. What I also liked about pangolins is that their arms are really chunky. Like if you look at their forearms, they're just kind of stubby triangles. And so I gave him some of those scales to pad out his upper arms and give a similar shape. I knew I wanted him to have long flowing hair, which is a you know, typical elf trait. A lot of pangolin scales all over the body and the main thing of course being the prehensile tail. So once I had sketched enough to feel like I had a general sense of the character then I moved on to poses and I just started really static because I didn't know how to draw someone with a bow and arrow so I just googled like archery poses and just copied one or two things which ended up way 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 too static and then I look over at Morgan's screen and his character's like jumping all over the place and I'm like I need to do something like that. <laughs> I actually asked for Morgan's input and I'm so glad I did because he just made it like 50 times more awesome. I don't know about 50 times. 46. 40, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. I decided that I definitely wanted his pose to be seen from the back because it would display some of the key traits the most clearly. So number one, the tail. And we decided, originally I thought I'd have the tail like redrawing the next arrow, but then decided all right, I'm gonna have this backstory where he's lost his right arm, which is his drawing arm. And so now he uses his tail to draw the bow. And instead of a full backpack, which goes over both shoulders, it's almost like your typical kind of like off-the-shoulder, one-sided hunter's cape. Oh yeah. But it is still a backpack. So he does carry things in that scaly, lumpy thing. And having that on one shoulder now leaves space on the other side for him to carry his uh, quiver of arrows. So all of this was best demonstrated more from a back view. The item that I didn't include was the short sword, just because compositionally it wasn't really working. I thought of having the, the, sh the sword strapped to his thigh or his calf. I was going to put it on his hip and then I realized that was just going to stick out at like the worst possible angle. So I, I have omitted that for the sake of this illustration, but if I were to play this character, Pangolas, <laughs> I would have him carry a short sword. He would carry it like on the left side because now he only has his left hand to wield things. And maybe previously he had a bigger weapon like a broadsword, mm. but now that he only has one arm, he can only handle a smaller weapon. Spend some time trying to add more energy into the pose. We got a lot more like S-curves going on, trying to have it flowy, but also maintaining the tension of like um, him drawing the bow. So once I was more or less happy with the pose, I went in and well, quote unquote refined the lines, which weren't too refined to be honest, and then started blocking in some base values. So I knew I wanted like the, the tail and the right leg, which is further away, to just lose detail and just kind of fade into grey. Then I came back to the foreground, chucked in base values, almost like cell shading style. Uh, and then as usual, I get stuck at this part of the process. And I was like going back and forth. I was even asking Morgan, I was like, I really mm. just want to flatten it and just yeah. one layer go painterly style. How did you get unstuck? 
Well, actually, when I asked you and you kind of helped me think through, you、mm. you asked me a question in return, which was, what else do you want to do in this phase before you flatten it? Yeah. So I identified a couple of areas, and then I realized, oh, there's actually not much more I need to do. And you affirmed that and said, yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't just flatten this now、mm. and work on it. Ah,、oh, cool. So I think that gave me the confidence to go ahead. Otherwise, I just end up stuck with like FOMO. And like, yeah. Am I gonna regret it if I flatten it now? Yeah. So with Morgan's blessing, <laughs> I flattened the image, started heading back towards my second comfort zone of polishing and rendering. But now that Morgan has said, "Look, you can flatten this. You can go ahead and start、um, finalizing it," I was like, "Okay. Well, if if he sees that, then that gives、Sometimes、me confidence." Sometimes you just need fresh eyes. You yeah, just need another person to say, "It's good. Just it's good. keep going." Yeah. 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 I think at this point we only had like 50 minutes left、yeah. or something, so it's like, all right, time time to make the whole thing presentable、mm. rather than tunnel vision on、exactly. details. Oh, at some point Morgan looked over at my screen and was like, "Wait, does he have dreadlocks?" And originally,、oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't.、Uh, what seemed to look like dreadlocks was just the the layer of line art underneath、mm. that was showing through. But once he said that, I was like, "Does he? That could work." <laughs> Yeah. Because that separates him from the the elf nobility. You know,、mm. he's this outcast living probably like this pangolinish <laughs> society. So he's a lot more rough and tumble. Probably doesn't have the same elf condition or for his hair. I like that you actually came up with a way to justify the dreadlocks. Whereas if I was doing dreadlocks, I wouldn't have thought about it. I would have just <laughs> slapped on dreads and been like, "Yeah, he's just a surfer. I don't know." <laughs> for me, because I love characters so much.、Mm. Anything、mm-hmm. like that immediately like speaks to me,、mm-hmm. and I start to feel the soul of the character. You know, this is、Ooh. a guy who's been, he's been wronged. He's been hunted for his scales. Yeah. He never asked to be brought into the world as this weird hybrid halfling,、um, and yet he still maintains his neutrality,、uh, his, his goodness in a sense,、mm-hmm. uh, or, his, or his lawfulness at least. I wasn't sure how far to take the render, and I just knew that I was limited by time anyway. So、mm. it was a matter of. Chucking in a few like shortcuts to make a piece glow a bit more. So like、mm. putting in that bit of blue shadow just to add color variation, just fading out the the bottom of the piece a little bit so that the attention's drawn towards the top. Chucking in tiny details like the little scratches on、um, his quiver and in his dreads.、Um, if I had more time, I would have done more work on the bow.、Mm. But gosh, we actually ran out of time, and then I realized I hadn't even put the arrow in yet. <laughs> so that was my final. <laughs> He definitely needs an arrow. <laughs> I think it looks great. I like what you did with the bow too.、Um, the way it sort of looks like taut and、mm. it like conveys like a sense of like direction really effectively.、Oh, good, thanks. Yeah, nice I, work, mate. Thanks so much.、Um, It was really helpful having you sitting there, so I could like bounce my questions and frustrations off you. But、mm. also, just looking at your screen for inspiration, I'm like,、uh. I need more of that. Here's Pangolas, and Pangolas. I don't know. Maybe we could play D and D with our two maybe characters. Maybe we could. Maybe we need to get <laughs> Cat and Alicia. Yes. To make their characters, and then we can play.、Mm-hmm. Did you have fun? A lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm actually very much invested in this character now. Oh, that's so good. And I would love to actually have someone play him in D and D. Not necessarily me. Yeah. But if we could figure out a way to put our two characters into、mm. a D and D campaign, maybe、uh, some commenters could、uh, politely suggest that、uh, we do another one of these、uh, with Alicia and Cat, possibly. Also, commenters, we we do read your comments. We have enjoyed a lot of them.、Mm. Like the last video, someone dubbed that Avatar, and that's just what we've come to <laughs> refer to、that. it as. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So please contribute. Feel free to write backstories、mm. and whatever you want for these characters. We read them. We like them. We appreciate. Them. I actually it's so much fun. I haven't named my character. <laughs> So maybe one of you guys can name her. Please rename mine. I don't want Pangolas. I like Pangolas. <laughs> Pangolas is cute. Pangolas. 
I, I love him. <laughs> We'd love to know what you guys think. Um, we had a lot of fun. We hope you had a lot of fun. Just a big thank you to our Patreons. Uh, without you guys, we can't do any of this. Uh, your support uh, means a lot and physically like helps us make all this content. If you would like to become a Patreon, uh, the link is in the description. So please have a look at that and consider subscribing. There are different tiers of Patreons and the top tier, which is the master tier, gets exclusive access to tutorials, a monthly Q&A, and you get to submit your artwork where we will critique and even like paint over if that's what you would like. We've done, what, two of those monthly things so far? Yeah. And we really, really enjoy those times. Yeah, like you guys really are fun. such a fun group. You're genuinely engaged and it, like, we just love you. We would love to see more people in the master tier. It's just such a fun community. Come join us. Thank you so right. much. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye bye.